Our first guest is Mar Guerrero. Mar Guerrero is el nostre anfitrió aquí al Recinto Modernista de San Pau. Él es el director de aquest lloc espectacular, maravillós, y también ha sido responsable de todo el proceso de recaudación de fondos para hacer posible aquest miracle de la reconstrucción de aquest espai. También ha desenvolupat una brillante carrera como com político, eh, como profesor universitario. Bienvenido, Mar Guerrero. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, good evening to all of you. It's a great pleasure, first of all, to host you here in São Paulo, uh, the most important art noble site in the world. And we will talk later on about this. Uh, I would like to uh, make you a brief introduction of my background. Uh, uh, I'm married. I'm 20, 42 years old. I'm married. I have a lovely kid that is called Paul. And I was born, I'm born in Barcelona, here in Catalonia. And first I will start with, the, with the knowledge, with my education, my academic background. I think that for taking good decisions, first you have to listen to your team, for example, and to learn a lot of things, and after you can take good decisions. Then academy and knowledge for me is really important in my life. Uh, I got a PhD in social science, uh, the specialization in international relations. I have a bachelor degree in business administration, and a diploma degree in European communities. I try to have a, a, a global uh, uh, learning. I was studying here in Barcelona, in my city, but I also, I also was studying at UK, at, UK, uh, at LSE, London School of Economics, and also at Reading University, and later on in United States, in California, and lovely uh, San Francisco, Berkeley University uh, in California. Uh, I consider that that uh, brings me a lot of uh, new skills also to my, my personality, uh, to learn in a different context, in a different continent, in different uh, behavior, cultures, uh, etc. I also uh, study later on uh, executive uh, direction program here in Asade Business School. Uh, my mother always told me that I received uh, some grants to study abroad. Uh, in the United States and in the UK, and my mother at the beginning always said, you are not going to get these grants because you are not good enough, we would say. <laughs> it's a nice mother, <laughs> I love her, but she said that. Uh, I received all the grants, and I, I got a lesson from this that is important in my life. I mean, if you want one thing, you have to go for this. If you don't go for this, you are not going to get it. That's for sure. If you fight for this, maybe you are not going to get it. But if you don't fight, I'm sure that you don't get it. And I think this is one important lesson that I learned uh, uh, from my academic uh, uh, life. On hobbies, I think it's also really important for me. I deserve at least one hour uh, a day for jogging or for doing a sport. Almost one hour a day, uh, more or less. But I try to do. I'm a marathon runner, uh, ultra marathon runner. Uh, in fact, I love to run in the mountains uh, more than the, in the city, but I'm doing a lot of kilometers or miles uh, every, every week. Uh, but w one thing is important for me. It gives me uh, the motivation, the, the capacity also to, to make my brain feel more free. We can say this kind of, of freedom sense that I think is also really important to take uh, decisions in, in, in important moments. Here, for example, uh, as director of, of the Arnobo uh, uh, site. And also one element. I consider as director here, but in some other organizations, that I don't feel well in an office, inside the office. I don't like this. I prefer to go around uh, to, to, to see different points of view, to talk with citizens, to talk with uh, consumers, whatever. Uh, it depends on your product. But uh, you have to be my, my recommendation in my life, and I think it has been good enough for me at least, it just go out of the, of the office. You have to get the emotions uh, on the feelings and, of the citizens. Uh, if not, you cannot make a good product or a good policy or a good uh, consultancy, etc. cetera, or good, uh, uh, whatever you, you, your domain is. Uh, this is also a second lesson from my hobbies. Just go out and, and get fresh air. If we cannot create important things, big things, if you don't have this fresh air in your body and in your, in your, in your mind. And then my professional uh, background, 
I have, uh, like, I'm a really, I consider myself a bit proactive. I like to do a lot of different things, to start the things, uh, the new projects, the new challenges, and then uh, the day-by-day -day management, I don't, I prefer just to start the things and, and, and to project my vision, my ideas, and, and to join the team to do this, but not to do the daily basis uh, management, we will say. But in more professional life, I have, like, two uh, phases. First one, a more institutional one, we will say. I've been, uh, I've been the coordinator of the first national youth plan here in the government, of the Catalan government here in, in Catalonia, and also I was head of the office of international, uh, institutional relations office of the, of, the, of the president of the country here in, in, in Catalonia. And later on, I just uh, 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 create my own business. It's more on trade. Global trade and consultancy, I think it's important, at least it was for me, just to have my own business, to design my own decisions, to take my own decisions, my own risk uh, in my company, we will say. Uh, later on, I joined as director uh, two years ago, two years and a half ago, uh, as director of, of, of Sao Paulo, our noble side. We will talk uh, uh, later on. But I would like also uh, uh, to mention two other elements that for me are important. I just published two books. I think it's important also. I, like, I love to read. Uh, anything, uh, everything, and I published two books. The last one on rebooting is called Rebooting Europe. It's about how we can create a new Europe, a Europe that is a strong uh, uh, civilization in the world with good values, etc., to promote good values around the world. More or less, that's all. Wow, that was yeah? fast. Okay. <laughs> so come, <laughs> I'll try. Here. come here Thank because you. I would like to talk now about yeah. this. It's, it's, we are very grateful and very happy and honored to be in this wonderful place because it's really, you said it's the um, biggest yeah, art nouveau site in the world. We, we say the most in important, it's the largest, it means the most important art nouveau site in, in Europe, it means in the world, uh, and is, what is relevant is in 1997 it was declared UNESCO World Heritage Site, mm -hmm. and for us it's really important uh, uh, because it's, uh, the most important thing is also that it was financed at that time, at the beginning of the 20th century, with private money, we will say. I mean, and, and there was a great architect, Domenico Montané, uh, some people, uh, especially uh, Pau Gil, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the banker, he was a Catalan banker living in Paris, and he put uh, a lot of money at that time uh, to create the most important, I think, at that time, a charity hospital in Europe. That wow. was built as a charity hospital to to solve the challenges of society, of Catalan society, of Barcelona society uh, at that, uh, that age. It was very ambitious at that time already. Well, it was uh, something really, really uh, ambitious, and I think with a lot of humanitarian values. I always say to my team that I'm sure that nowadays, in the 21st century, if we had the money that we don't have that money nowadays, but if we had that money, we don't have the mind so ambitious uh, to create something similar. It's impossible. I think it's a pity, but I think nowadays we have uh, our mind is, 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 is by, because the daily by day basis, I think our mind has become a, a bit smaller, less ambitious. And I think that was an important element that we have to try to promote. To recover. To recover. And also, it's so beautiful. I always think when entering in, in this place the first time, I was thinking it says a lot about a society when a place that is uh, devoted to ill people to people is not only so, uh, is also the, the aesthetic uh, aspect is so important yeah. because not everywhere the hospitals have been built as beautiful as this. So this, it says a lot about the society uh, uh, it, our it, values. Yeah, I think that, that, that was the purpose to feel that the most, the poorest uh, citizens living in Barcelona, they have uh, the chance to, to have health uh, in, a, in a palace, we will say at that time, it's not a palace, but a kind of uh, city inside the city, like a, a garden, uh, and, and that was really important uh, at that time to decide. Talking this, about so. palace, you you told me you told me that when the king was here, yeah. you were, tell that, that, that an anecdote that well, he it, said. It was when they uh, the first day that they opened this mm -hmm. building a long time ago. It came here the king, and they say, well, these Catalan people or these people from Barcelona at that time. Uh, uh, you are really strange because you don't have a palace for the king, but you have a palace for the poor people. And that was something like, 
it's not common, we will say, and we are really proud of this. Yes, I mean, very, this, they uh, say a lot about yeah. this society, the, the power of civil society. Yeah, in about Europe. these values. And, and we try to keep nowadays, uh, we are in the 21st century, the context is completely different, of course, but we try to keep these values. And, uh, and to make this place not a unique place in architectural point of view, that, that is, is obvious, already. it's a jewel. We have to prevent, I mean, to keep it like this, to polish. Uh, but we want to create a knowledge center also here. We have seven international institutions uh, uh, linked to United Nations uh, Millennium Goals. We'll say sustainability, knowledge, health, etc. And we want to also to give solutions from Sao Paulo and the institutions that are here already uh, for the new challenges of uh, the 21st society in the world. And we are, in that sense, you are being very ambitious because it's the, the mentality is a global mentality. It's is this place as a center for global, uh, with, with global impact? As yeah, well. that, that's the idea. I mean, we are located in Barcelona, fantastic city, uh, already nowadays one of the most important cities in the world, uh, and the nicest, with nice weather, or nice location, clearly. We have a jewel that is Sao Paulo, and we want now to create uh, also uh, something unique uh, in terms of the ability of human beings to create something uh, positive for the new generations. Yeah, how, at intellectual level, we will say. And how was the process of, of finding the funding? Because probably well, that was a not lot easy. of money. That was not easy, but we feel, of course, we have some funding from uh, institutions. I mean, the European Union, different governments, city halls, uh, etc. But we have, of course, to, to battle a lot, uh, to negotiate a lot to, get, to gain this. Also, we have a lot of private funding also from citizens, recovering a bit the, the, the first idea of the of the Paugil. space of Paujil, and, and, and we have been really proud that people believe in this project. At the end, there is a project behind this, and we just put on the table people believe in this, and it's becoming a reality. It's already a reality, and, and we want to consolidate. We open this uh, 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 complex, this site, as a new site uh, last year, one year ago. It means that this year, 2015, is important for as a consolidation for us, but it's, it's becoming a a uh, really successful project nowadays already. And, we and really wh what are the institutions that are, have, are here right now? We, we have different, as I mentioned, seven institutions, uh, worldwide institutions uh, on these fields, uh, education, knowledge, education, health, and science. Like UNESCO? And, and, yeah, we have uh, the, the University of United Nations mm -hmm. uh, Institute, it's called. Uh, you, we have UN Habitat in terms of smart cities uh, debates, for example, resilience of the cities, etc. Uh, we have WOPA, the global, ship, uh, the global uh, watership operators, mm -hmm. that they just uh, work with the management of water. That is really important for, for a lot, not just for the Mediterranean, for example, in Barcelona, but for all the world. We have also uh, the World Health Organization, the regional uh, headquarter here, yeah, in Barcelona, uh, we have the Global University Network for Innovation, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We have EFI, the European Forest Institute, on, on all the forestry uh, process, et cetera, et cetera. Also, you, you said that you, you teach cross-cultural business? Yeah, I'm teacher, I'm teacher from the last, uh, since eight years ago, of cross-cultural business. Uh, well, also, as I mentioned in my introduction, more or less, I always... Uh, like or love uh, international relations, global world. I mean, this idea of we live in, in different uh, cultures, but we have to understand each other. We need a dialogue and, and bridges. And, and always I'm really attracted to try to make some developments on this so process. You are coherent between your life because this is your interest, but you are working in a place where you can put well, in, uh, in, in action this uh, Patricia, values. I will tell you that I'm happy to work here yeah, I will <laughs> uh, because be happy it fits too. with my values in that sense. So now there are questions from people. Oh, yeah? And it's time okay. for questions. Let's go. And I'm reading. How has your experience as a director of the Recinta, the difficulties and good things of being the director? This is one. If, yeah. And there is a second one, more personal. How do you get the work, family, sport, writing, hobbies, balance? What would be your advice to people who feel that 24 hours are not enough? Wow. Well, the first one, let's go for the first one. As experience, it's a great experience. I always uh, said that I've been doing different things uh, in my life, uh, but I always say that this project is unique and will, will mark a lot my life uh, because it's special. Somehow it's special, the project is special. Uh, 
We have here an excellent team. That's important. Mm -hmm. One of my main, uh, uh, we say, not competences, but I try always to, to fulfill, uh, to read, to, to search about the needs, global needs, and try to uh, make uh, a team working together for reaching this, uh, these needs. And here in Sao Paulo, we have an excellent team that is just doing a lot of, of all this job. Uh, that's one, one element. My, my responsibility more is trying to put this uh, degree, keep this degree of ambition. We always, day by day, with different relations, with the day by day management, we are losing ambition. Because we are not confused, but we, we, we have a lot of things to do. And my, I always say, you have to learn to say no to some things. I mean, if you don't mm -hmm. like or you don't want to do, just say no. I mean, people are used to say yes to everything. We have a lot of meetings. I never have a meeting, for example, uh, not never, it's not, it's not true. But uh, normally, I don't have, for example, meetings during lunchtime. I go to the gym. I prefer to go to running here. We have a nice mountain here, and <laughs> I just go here. Uh, this kind of thing, but you have to say no to, I mean, you have to manage your time. And this is really important. Yeah. And I just, on this, I try to, to be consequent on this and try to, to transmit to my team also this, that uh, we are not here to be in a, in a table or in a chair for 14 hours a day working. We are here to create something important. And uh, you can do it from here, or you can do it from Paris by mobile phone, or by streaming, or by internet. Now that we have the technology to do a lot of things. Yes, technology has changed a lot, how a we lot. relate to each other. And also, you mentioned something about the sustainability, how this place is the biggest in geothermal. Oh, yeah, we have, we have, we want to, to link, as you mentioned, the values of the place, like the spirit mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. place with the, with the reality. And then, for example, we, we cannot talk on sustainability and being like, want uh, this will to lead uh, sustainability policies to solutions if we don't uh, act sustainable mm -hmm. uh, in the complex, in the site, and, and in coherence. In coherence. And that, for that, uh, we invest a lot in geothermia. Mm -hmm. That is, we just make like more than 200 holes. Uh, they have, I think there is like uh, something like 125 meters wow. uh, below the floor. And with this, we save more or less 20% of energy uh, that in this site, that is huge, it's huge, it's 13 hectares. Uh, and with uh, 12 pavilions, it's huge, uh, we, it's, a, it's a good save of energy. This is one example. Mm -hmm. huh? Another thing is because we have so many things to talk to you and uh, okay. a lot, and very, very short time. But one thing that interests me a lot is you have written uh, a lot about how we can think about Catalonia as a state in, in the context of Europe. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, this is another. <laughs> <laughs> it's for another program almost, but I think uh, I believe in freedom of citizens. I mean, the most important is the individual, and, and I believe in a free society in the sense that everybody can do, if they have equal opportunities, that everybody can promote themselves and have their own challenges, we can say. And on this, I am fully convinced that if the Catalan people want to be independent, to have their own state, I think they have completely the right to do it. And in the 21st century, I think the problem is not the states or the borders. It's just how we solve the problems of the citizens. And mm -hmm. if well, with this uh, way uh, is the best to give uh, the best welfare to the society, I am fully in favor. Hmm. Interesting. So we have to invite you again to talk to you only about it. Okay. But it will be pressure. Thank you very, very, very much for being here and for having us, for hosting us in this marvelous place. Thank, Thank you, Patricia. You, Mark. My pleasure. <laughs>